Behind my gear. The next morning. Oh, what time is it? Wow, that's early. One hour later. Well, time to get dressed. Huh? Where'd this come from? It's April. Who buys winter essentials in April? And why is the UPC code scribbled out? It almost looks as if it wasn't even paid for. Oh well. Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Nothing like sleeping in on the weekends. I feel refreshed. But lately I've been having this dream where I'm called a hero. I'd like to be called a hero in real life, but I'd either have to save somebody or at the very least help somebody out first. So until that happens, I guess playing video games where I play as a hero will be enough. The season finale of a season of a TV show is important. It's the last episode to come out for that season, and it has to have a good ending for that season so people will be interested in checking out the next season. Of course, if it's the final season, the season finale will also be the series finale. But in this case, it's not. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 2 is the episode where Spongebob wins the conch signal in a contest and uses it to call Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. Wikipedia says this episode aired on March 3rd, 2001, but this site says that the episode aired on April 8th, 2000. I talked about this last time, so I won't spend too long on this, but I still don't understand why the Wikipedia article and this TV schedule site have different dates. I remember the Wikipedia said April 8th, 2000 a long time ago, so that's what I usually stick by. This episode is also the first official sequel to a previous Spongebob episode. Holy crap! An actual sequel to an actual Spongebob episode? A show with so little continuity? This kind of thing doesn't happen very often, and rarely occurs outside of the six Murray Man and Barnacle Boy episodes, specifically the episodes that actually have the numbers 1 through 6 in the titles. This is also the first appearance of the Dirty Bubble, one of the most well-known villains of Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. He doesn't appear often, but whenever he does make an appearance, they're usually pretty memorable. Charles Nelson Riley voiced the Dirty Bubble in this episode, and this was the only time he voiced this character in the series before he passed away in 2007. He didn't even return to voice the Dirty Bubble in episode 103, Murray Man of Arnold Boy 5 from season 3, which aired in 2002. Even in that episode, he was voiced by Tom Kenny. The only other time Charles Nelson Riley voiced the Dirty Bubble was in the video game Lights, Camera, Pants from 2005. I personally do not know why this is the case, but that's a story for another time. Right now, let's watch this episode and see the Dirty Bubble's first appearance, as well as the final episode of Season 1. So the episode starts up and Spongebob is watching Murray Man and Barnacle Boy on a Saturday morning. This episode has Murray Man and Barnacle Boy out of retirement, breaking their backs and fighting cardboard cutouts of old villains. The realistic fish head announces the winner of a contest who would receive a special prize from the series of Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. The winner was somebody named Spring Boob Squire Pin for his life-size Krabby Patty mannequins of Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. Spongebob was pissed because that was his idea. But the fish learned he pronounced the winner's name wrong, and Spongebob was the winner after all, and his prize was there immediately. Man, why can't I get packages delivered that quickly after I ordered them? I ordered a new shirt online last year, and it still hasn't arrived. Spongebob opened the package, and the prize was the conch signal. He wanted to know if it still worked, so he used it to call Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. 
Soon enough, they heard it, and they went down to the Mermelair, but when they arrived, they needed to find the invisible boatmobile. Once they found it, Barnacle Boy got burned by the tailpipe, and they set off. Swindon started to wonder if the conch signal doesn't work anymore. They just came out of retirement. Give them some time. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy arrived and realized SpongeBob was the one who blew the conch signal. SpongeBob explained that he won it in a contest, and they told SpongeBob that it should only be used if there's actual trouble. SpongeBob agreed, and Murray Man and Barnacle Boy left to go back to Shady Shoals. Later on, Murray Man was showering when the conch signal sounded again. They rushed away half naked, and when they arrived, they thought SpongeBob was almost dead, but SpongeBob was having trouble opening a jar of mayonnaise. Well, to be fair, not only do I hate mayonnaise, but I hate opening jars too. Barnacle Boy was pissed, but Murray Man said that emergencies don't come around as often as they used to. Barnacle Boy agreed to let SpongeBob blow the conch every once in a while, but SpongeBob started blowing it too often, even for mundane tasks, and eventually Barnacle Boy took it away because they were exhausted. SpongeBob said he only did it because they were his heroes and he wanted to spend some time with them. Barnacle Boy tried to destroy the conch signal with his soul provision, but he couldn't. Mermaid Man told Barnacle Boy not to be too hard on him, and then he offered to let SpongeBob come on patrol with them, much to Barnacle Boy's dismay. As they drove around, SpongeBob wanted to drive. Okay, he can't even drive a boat he can see. What makes him think he'll be able to drive a boat he cannot see? SpongeBob touched a button and the boat folded them into origami. When Murray Man and Barnacle Boy were patrolling the city, SpongeBob startled them with donuts and they jumped off the building. Later, they found the guy who used to play the Atomic Flounder on their show. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy joked about the Atomic Flounder becoming a villain again, but SpongeBob took it seriously and attacked him. The Atomic Flounder got pissed off and burned Barnacle Boy in the face and left. Later at the diner, SpongeBob asked what they would do the next day. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy asked SpongeBob to look up their theme song on the jukebox, and they ditch him while he's distracted. Outside, they can't find the invisible boatmobile. Man, in retrospect, Barnacle Boy was right. What was the point of making the boatmobile invisible in the first place? They could never find it, SpongeBob hit the origami button, and you can't even say it looks cool because you can't even see it. When they finally do find it, one of their enemies, the Dirty Bubble, shows up. When SpongeBob finds a song, he sees the Dirty Bubble and is shocked. SpongeBob asks the Dirty Bubble for his autograph and accidentally pops the Dirty Bubble with the point of the pencil. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy call SpongeBob a hero and let him ride in the invisible boatmobile again. They ride together in the boat, singing a song together, and the episode ends. So that was Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 2 and the final episode of Season 1. And for our first season finale, it was a great episode. Of course, the fact that it's the season finale doesn't add anything to it at all because it's treated as just a regular episode. But of course, it's still a good episode either way. There are a lot of things in here that I like. I always loved the part at the beginning where the realistic fish had mispronounced Spongebob's name and when Spongebob's house backflipped when Spongebob realized he won the contest after all. Barnacle Boy constantly getting burned by either the tailpipe or the atomic flounder was funny too. I love the Jingle Bells-like song that Spongebob and Murray Man sing in this episode, and all the crazy antics that Spongebob caused when on patrol, especially when he scared the shit out of Murray Man and Barnacle Boy that they jumped off the building. I also like when Murray Man and Barnacle Boy are just floating in midair before they realize they're not in the invisible boatmobile. Yeah, I know, it's a stable with cartoons, but I can't help it, it's funny. Also, this is just a side note, but I do find it kinda odd that Patrick doesn't appear in this episode. It is a Murray Man and Barnacle Boy episode, and he is a staple in them. Whether we're talking about the episodes with 1 through 6 in the title, the episodes that don't continue the math trend, or the two episodes that came out in seasons 10 and 11 after Ernest Borgnine passed away, where he and Spongebob play Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. He appears in a lot of them, but not this one. However, if he was in this episode, he'd probably abuse the conch signal so much more than Spongebob did, and things might be a bit worse than how they actually turned out. Not just with the conch signal, but with the invisible boatmobile too. But that is a nitpick, and that never affected how much I liked the episode. I like how we now get to see Murray Man and Barnacle Boy's semi-retired superhero life. We get to see the shoot that takes them to the Mermelair, the Mermelair itself, and there's another episode of their TV show from after they came out of retirement. Speaking of which, it's also great seeing them fight the cardboard cutouts and when they break their backs. 
Murray Man and Barnacle Boy themselves are great characters, of course, but I've already said that before, but it's true, damn it, since we don't get to see them in any episodes these days outside of just seeing them on comic books, posters, or on TV, it's always great to look back on them. The Dirty Bubble is a great villain, and although we don't get to see him a lot, even in this episode, he's still a great character in general and has some awesome moments. I don't know if I'd say he's better than Man Ray, but that's off topic. Man Ray will make his official debut in Season 2, so we'll be seeing him too at some point, but for now, I'm gushing about this episode, which has a dirty bubble. The dirty bubble is an awesome character, and whether he's voiced by Charles Nelson Reilly or Tom Kenny, I still wish we saw him more often. Whether it was before or after Murray Man and Barnacle Boy were written off the show after Ernest Borgnine passed away in 2012. I also personally never noticed a difference between the two different voice actors, but that doesn't mean a lot in the grand scheme of things. Overall, this episode is great. I love how the story plays out, and Murray Man and Barnacle Boy are some of the most likable characters that we don't get to see very often. It's cool seeing one of their most iconic villains in person for the first time, and we get to witness how they operate as superheroes after recently coming out of retirement the last time we saw them. Patrick may not have been here, but the story and episode still works just as well without him. This episode is another classic, and whether this was intended to be the season finale of season 1 or not, it is still awesome and always will be. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 2 is a great episode. The Dirty Bubble is a great character, even if we don't see him a lot in the series or even in just this episode, and Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy continuing their superhero lives right after coming out of retirement is awesome. SpongeBob's antics with the con signal and while he's on patrol with Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are really funny, and it's awesome when he saves Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy by accidentally popping the Dirty Bubble. It'll always be fun to watch, but more importantly, I finally finished talking about every episode of Spongebob Season 1. And to celebrate, I'm going to fulfill a dream I've had since 2020. That's the dream. Time to grab the Season 1 DVD. Oh wait, that's not it. Wait, what? The DVD is in here. I always keep it in here. Oh no, where could it be? No. 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 Where could it be? Wait a minute. The UPC code was scribbled out as if it wasn't paid for, and nobody buys winter essentials in April. So that can only mean one thing. My DVD must have been stolen! I have to get it back, but I can't do this alone. It's me. Who's me? It's me. Alright, what's up? Yeah, can you come over? I need your help. Sure. Thanks. Hello? Hey Carl, it's me. I need your help. How important is it? I have a problem myself. If you come over, I'll let you tell me your problem first before I tell you mine. Deal. Thanks. Later that day. Hey man, thanks for coming over. Sure thing, but I have my own issue. Oh really? What is it? My item bag was stolen out of my garage. Really? Yeah. Because my Spongebob Season 1 DVD was stolen too. No way! Yeah. Oh, hey Carl. Hey Mikey, sorry I'm late. Don't worry about it. So what's your problem? Well, my girlfriend's favorite necklace was stolen. You had something stolen too? My item bag was stolen! And so is my Spongebob Season 1 DVD. Really? Yeah. What are we gonna do? I don't know. Well, I noticed this in my house earlier, and that's how I knew the necklace was stolen. 41 Bind Street. Do you think that's where our stuff is? Maybe. Okay, well, we gotta go there. But uh, just out of curiosity, have you told your girlfriend about this? No, she's working, and I told her I might be late to pick her up from work because something came up. Okay then. Let's make it quick though. 
She might be pissed if I'm a little late. Why? What'd she say? She said, all right then, you are my boyfriend after all. Fair enough, let's go. One car journey later. Well, this looks like the place. Yeah, let's go inside. Okay guys, let's look for our stuff. Hey Toby, Carl, I found something. I found these winter essentials. I think these were the winter essentials that looked like they weren't paid for. And here's our stuff too. Yes, we got our stuff back. Hey, <gasps> who are you people? We're the people you stole stuff from. You can't prove that. We're holding the evidence. And I found this price tag for winter essentials that was scribbled out. Nobody buys winter essentials in April. Well, it's not what you think. We think you stole from us for no reason. Ha! That's where you're wrong. You had a reason? Well, I lost my original copy and I couldn't find any in stores or online. So you just stole mine? Defiant steal. Okay, fair point. Hey, give me that back. There's nothing in here. Oh yeah, so? So where are the DVDs? Well, my brother always ruins discs, no matter what kind of discs they are. So I always keep the discs in a separate disc wallet and just keep the case separate from them. So why do you still have the case then? Well, why wouldn't I? Give me that. Yeah, and why'd you steal my item bag? Oh, that's because my girlfriend got me that gift over there and she needed somewhere to put it in in order to hide it from me. Well, clearly that worked, so I'm taking it back now. And why did you steal my girlfriend's favorite necklace? Oh, and I got that because I was going to use it to propose to my girlfriend. You propose with a ring. She doesn't believe in rings. And now that I say it out loud, I don't think it'll work after all. Yeah, well, we're going to go now. No, don't go. Why? Well, I only did this because... I ran out of stuff to watch on Netflix with my roommate and I wanted to start something new. Something new? You know what I mean. Hmm. I got an idea. Here. What's this? A new game that was released within the year. I got that game for Christmas last year. But well, my cousin kept beating me at the game, and it makes me not really want to play it anymore because he kept rubbing it in. So you can have it if you want. Thanks. You're a hero. Aw, uh, thanks. Uh, what's your name again? Garrett, and my roommate's name is Sean, and he's just getting home right now, so you better hide. Hey, man. What's up? Come back. Hey, man. Got a new game we can try. Super Monkey Ball? I haven't played this in forever. So a few months ago, right? That's right, let's go try it out. Okay! Well, that worked out pretty well. Yeah, we got our stuff back and we made some roommates happy. And I got called a hero. You are a hero. It's true, man, you got our stuff back! All right, let's get out of here. Well, that worked out pretty well. My friends and I got our stuff back, and I made the guy who took our stuff in the first place happy, as well as his roommate. But more importantly, I got called a hero, so that means my weekend dream was fulfilled, and I don't need these anymore. Now, what was I doing before all that? Oh, right. As I was saying before everything went down, Mario Man and Barnacle Boy 2 is a great episode, and I can't believe I've covered every episode of SpongeBob Season 1. And now, time to fulfill the dream I've had since 2020.
that's it. Now that I've covered every episode of season one, it's time to celebrate because we only have 12 more seasons worth of episodes to go over. Wait. Well, this was my decision. <laughs>